Hi, I'm Amber Burkhalter with APDT, and I'm here for Train Your Dog Month with Sophie. Say hi, everybody. We are going to talk about bringing your puppy home, the fundamentals to being successful with a new puppy. The first thing we are going to talk about is the health of your dog. So when you bring your new puppy home, you want to make sure, number one, that they are very healthy. First stop is your vet. So go find yourself a veterinarian, visit them, check in with them, make sure your puppy is healthy. Get advice and to what you're going to feed your puppy. Puppies have very specific dietary needs, so you want to make sure that you speak to your veterinarian about those needs and that you pick an appropriate puppy food. When you visit your veterinarian, they're going to do a cursory exam. Hi! They're going to look at their ears, they're going to check out their eyes, make sure they're generally pretty healthy. They'll also go ahead and start a vaccine regimen, which is extremely important to keep your puppy safe. It is. During this time, your dog is not fully vaccinated. You want to be super careful about where you take your puppy and who you expose them to, as well as what dogs you expose them to. You don't want to take them to really public spaces where they may be exposed to illness or disease that could put their health at risk. Mental health is also really important. We talk a lot about physical health and about how we want to keep a puppy healthy physically. During this period of their life, before six months of age, their mental health is extremely important as well. So make sure whatever socialization protocols you're putting in place, they are positive experiences for your dog. Anybody you introduce them to, any puppies you introduce them to, anywhere they go, you want to make sure they have a really good experience so that they develop solid mental health as well as solid physical health. The next thing we're going to talk about is keeping your puppy from getting lost. Sadly, a lot of dogs get lost. Often what happens is the puppy slips out the door, somebody doesn't realize the back gate was left open, and there's no collar or tag on the puppy. So the first thing you wanna do when you bring your puppy home is get your puppy a collar and a tag. You wanna list your contact information on that tag as well as the puppy's name. Some puppies have never been on a collar, so you may find a puppy who's a little scared or skittish, feels really weird, they may scratch a little bit. That's okay, they'll get used to it. You can buy a collar or a tag pretty much anywhere now. It's really easy to acquire one. Make sure when you put the collar on that it is not super snug. So let me show you on Sophie the best way to do that. Hey, Soph, come here. Hi. So I should be able to fit my hands three or two or three fingers under this collar. This collar is perfect. Now, when Sophie grows up, and as she grows, every day she's growing. She is. You want to make sure you check that collar on a regular basis. People often forget that the puppy is growing and the collar needs to be adjusted. So you want to make sure the collar doesn't get too tight on your puppy. The second, the third, excuse me, the third thing we're going to talk about is home safety. Before you even bring your puppy into your house, you need to make sure that your home is safe for a puppy. I often tell people, you want to think about it this way. Would you let a two-year-old child alone with X? So what is X? Power cords, power strips, medications small objects, cleaning supplies. It's really ideal that you do this before the puppy comes home. Any sort of computer cords, DVD cords, cords that are hanging and, and on the floor that are accessible to your puppy are super dangerous. Puppies don't know that they're dangerous. They'll chew on different things. Power cords seem to be really popular. Obviously, if a dog gets access to medications or cleaning materials or you know chews on a power cord, it can be really dangerous and hurt them. So make sure you do a really thorough puppy proof. If you happen to have children in your home, make sure you take a really good look for small toys. Legos and action figures are really important that you make sure you pick those up. Those objects, if they're swallowed by your dog, can actually get stuck in their tummy. So you want to make sure that you do a really thorough check of your home. Pick up any small action figures or Legos or things like that. So. The next thing we're going to decide is where is our puppy going to play? How are we going to keep our puppy safe in our home? I like to set up a play space for my puppy, and it's different for everybody. Some people like to pick a room, a kitchen, something like that, where they'll like gate off two doors. I'm a big fan of buying an X-Pen, which is a play pen for children, actually, although you can buy them for dogs. Essentially, it makes a very nice big circle. And in that play space, I put everything my puppy is going to need. You don't want to put this play space somewhere where the dog is remote or removed and not a part of your family. You want them to be a part of your family. The idea of this play space is that it is safe for them and it is fun for them. And it can also be a place where you spend time with your puppy. So in that play space, you want to make sure it has proper sunlight, that you have access to the puppy and the puppy has access for, to you. And you would place suitable chew toys for your dog there. 
Now, every dog is a little different. What is suitable for our Sophie may not be suitable for your dog. So make sure you pick safe and healthy toys for your dog to play with. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the crate. Crate I know, is that your Kindle? <laughs> so crate training has been around for a while. Essentially, the way that crate training works is that most dogs want to keep their spaces clean that they sleep and eat in. Puppies in particular really want a nice, safe, clean space. Sometimes what happens is we look at this crate and it looks a little scary. It looks kind of not pretty. It may even make you feel like your dog's going to jail. The really great thing about crates is that dogs really like to have their own safe space. They want to be somewhere that's quiet. They feel safe there. They can curl up. If you notice your dog in your home, a lot of times they'll go under a chair or under a table to find a space that kind of caves them in. So our crate is going to become that space for our dog. When you first bring your puppy home, you want to make sure you put the crate in a safe space. So it needs to be well ventilated, well lit. It needs to be a quiet space, but again, not removed from your family. You wouldn't want to put it in a closet in downstairs. You want it upstairs in your home, part of your home, but in a quieter space. Again, the dog is going to want somewhere where they can sit and be quiet and rest quietly. You need to pick the proper size crate and the proper, proper crate for your family. There are different kinds of crates now. There are cloth crates that are collapsible that you can carry around. There are metal crates like this, and there are also plastic or what are called airline crates. Different dogs do better in different kinds of crates. Sophie likes this crate. Ah, is that your bed? Is that your kennel? It is, I know. Some dogs don't like metal crates and some dogs don't like plastic crates. If you get a crate that doesn't work well for your dog, just try a different kind of crate. Now, what's important about the crate, we're gonna get some of Sophie's treats up. Look what I have. Hi. Sophie's not too interested in going in her kennel right now. Obviously, this is a much more exciting area. I don't wanna force my puppy into this crate. I want this to be a positive experience for them. Hello, can you sit please? Hello, sit. Oh, what a good girl, thank you. So, in the beginning, the first time I introduced my puppy to a crate, I'm just gonna to toss some cookies in go in, get her treats, come back out. I'm not going to force her into this kennel. Over time, she'll start to acclimate a little better. Other ways to help your puppy get used to a crate, you feed them in their kennel. So when we bring our puppy home, we'll put their food in there, they go in, they eat. We can start closing the door and opening the door for them. Give them treats. Good girl. You can also give them a chew toy. Again, this needs to be a toy that you're supervising and is very safe for your puppy. This <laughs> toy is safe for Sophie. She doesn't chew it up. She doesn't swallow any of the pieces, but this may not be appropriate for your puppy. So it's really important that in the beginning you figure out what toys are safe for your puppy. You want the crate to be large enough for your dog to stand up, turn around in the circle, and lie down. This crate is very big, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now Sophie does really well in this crate. You might buy a crate that is a little smaller or has what's a movable back grate where the crate can grow as your puppy grows. You don't want the crate to be too big. More importantly, you do not want the crate to be too small. If your puppy cannot stand up and turn around, as Sophie is showing us, good girl, thank you, like that, it is not appropriate for them. Bedding is a personal choice. Some people choose to put bedding in their, in their puppy's crate. Some people don't. If you decide to put bedding in your puppy's crate, make sure you check it on a regular basis that your puppy isn't chewing or consuming that bedding and that they're not urinating on it. I know. So, as part of crate training is housebreaking. So the great thing about crate training is if my puppy stays in her crate, the minute she comes out, I take her outside. So we prevent a lot of potty accidents in the house. Setting up your dog for success with housebreaking is actually relatively easy. You want to pick the right spot in your yard that you want your dog to go every single time. You want this to be very consistent. The more consistent you can be with your dog in housebreaking, the faster it will go. When you take your puppy out of the crate or outside at any time, you're gonna take your puppy to that spot and that is where the puppy is gonna potty every time we go to the same spot. You may do this on leash. If you have a very small puppy, you may just be able to carry them out there off leash. With Sophie here, <coughs> hi, we would do this on leash. She's gonna wander off, start smelling the flowers, forget she has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so we take her to this spot. When she potties, big reward. Now, 
for some dogs that can be a treat for some dogs that may be a toy it really depends what you want to avoid because puppies forget you take them outside you don't want to start playing with them until they have actually potty so make sure you get the business side of things done before you start playing otherwise what can happen is the puppy starts to play you guys are having a super time and then we come back in and we potty in the floor because we forgot to go so make sure your dog potties before you take them back out be consistent take them to the same spot every time you also want to monitor hi their food and water yes remember <clears throat> thank you what goes in has to come out if your puppy has been napping just woke up from a long night's rest suddenly decides that they need to go over there and sniff the ground a little bit take them outside they probably have to potty hi yes so we're going to talk a little bit about training now you really want to think long term so sophie is a pretty big girl for her age good damn what a good girl thank you so the question is do i want this dog if she ends up being 80 or 90 pounds sleeping in my bed and jumping on my guest maybe i don't care maybe i do i don't want a 90 pound dog sleeping in my bed so when i bring my puppy home i want to start as i mean to go so what that means is what are your long-term goals for this puppy well you know i want her to be calm when my guests come over i want her to sleep quietly on her bed I want her, hi, you have to sit. Thank you, you're a very good girl. So, whatever my goals are for my puppy, I want to start from the very beginning reaching those goals. So, for your family or for yourself, figure out what your goals are and then design your training program around that. When you're training, you want to go positive. Remember that punitive-based training has a lot of very bad side effects and doesn't build the relationship that we really want to build with our puppy. No, it doesn't. Hi, good girl. So, training a puppy should be fun. It shouldn't be scary or a lot of work. No, it shouldn't. And you can find out what, what is it about your puppy. What are they like? Sophie here loves this toy, and she also loves treats. So, we're going to use those to train our puppy. Punishment is never appropriate when you're training. Hi. So, for Sophie, she already knows how to sit, so we're going to use this a little to our advantage. We're going to focus on when she does the right thing for me. Oh, good girl. So the minute she sat, I went ahead and rewarded her. As her trainer and as her owner, I want to make sure that I'm really focusing on the behaviors I want her to do, not the ones I don't want her to do. Remember, your puppy doesn't know. They don't know that jumping on your guest isn't okay. They don't know that they shouldn't run off when the door is open. Good sit. Yes, good girl. So you really want to focus on the dog doing the right things. And when they do, catching those behaviors and rewarding those behaviors. <gasps> For example, if my guests come over. Oh, good down. Yes. If my guests come over, I'm going to, and I want my dog to sit. I'm going to start by just teaching Sophie to sit. Good girl. Yes. I'm going to teach her to sit so that she learns and understands the command. Now I'm going to introduce my friend who comes over and I remind my friend Hey, don't touch her yet, ask her to sit first. And what happens over time is that Sophie will develop the habit of sitting to greet. Hello. Versus if we spend a lot of time focusing on what we don't want her to do, she's not gonna learn what we do want her to do and she will not be successful as our puppy. Hey, Soph, can you lay down? Oh, good girl. Toys are also a great way to train a dog. Yes, she loves this toy and she loves to engage us. So we can use that to train her as well. Now, remember, the first 16 weeks of your puppy's life are crucial to their development. You want to make sure that you avoid any traumatic events for them and that all of their exposure to the world that we live in, puppies, dogs, cars, sounds, all of these events are positive, right? Yes. Sophie here is obviously <laughs> developing quite well and healthy. <laughs> you want to find yourself a trainer that is a positive reinforcement trainer. Engage that trainer. They can be a great resource for you and provide you with great guidance on how to raise a very healthy puppy. Yes, mentally and physically. Avoid any training that uses punitive-based methods and don't do anything with your dog that you just don't think is right to do. But most of all, make sure you have fun with your puppy. Again, I'm Amber Burkhalter with APDT and this is for Train Your Dog Month.